Welcome to this very special Swarf and Chips. Chloe, who's filming this, and I myself have the privilege of being at Double G Engineering. And I'm standing next to three very handsome gentlemen. Rob, why am I standing next to the three of you here? <laughs> this is uh, a family business and it's three generations, my son, my father and myself. Now this Swarf and Chips is going to be getting underneath the covers of Double G Engineering and pretty much quizzing you, Rob, about the running and owning of a machine shop and how it's changed over the years. But I want a little bit of an introduction. So, Louis, um, you're not technically an, uh, a machinist engineer by trade, are you? No, I went to uni and studied product design, but... Um... After that, it's pro design briefly touches on this, but got into this sort of side of it and really enjoying it. And Eric, you're the founder here, aren't you? To mine. <laughs> yes, I am, yeah, yeah. And you started this company back in 1971. Right, yeah, yeah. With a partner? With a partner, yeah, yeah. And I've, I've seen you on the machines already today. Yeah, well, we didn't have machines like this. They were all manual, capstans, a uh, little fry press, a drilling machine, and that was about it. You enjoying it still? Well, they won't let me retire, so. <laughs> Blame your son, they won't let you retire. Brilliant, I'll let you go back to your stations, but hopefully we'll pass you on the tour. So thank you so much, Jens. Thank you, uh, Eric. And he's even got the part ready to go. He's yeah. just walked over before filming and literally said, come on then, hurry up, I need to be machining. So you're still on it. The hardest worker here. Definitely. <laughs> well, I'm all manual, so, uh, you know, I don't do CNC. No, so definitely the hardest worker here. <laughs> All hands on. Right, thank you so much. The phone's going brilliant. That just shows how busy we are. So we're going to take you on a little bit of a tour of Double G. And you've got some sexy machines here. We try. You've invested in a, a, a lot. We have, yeah, yeah, over the years. So tell me about what you specialise in then at Double G. Well, we're a subcontract machine shop. Um, we haven't got our own product. If we, if we think we can do it, we'll have a go. And we'll have a go at anything. Um, I think that's, that's what's kept us in business, really. And what would you say is like your capacity? What do you show off that you do best? Well, we do everything. We're milling, turning, five axis milling, four axis milling. Uh, prime example of a job here. Someone's came, come across, they need... Uh, these have got to be shop peened and we need to machine these wheels, machine pockets in them, put the almond blocks in for where they shop peen to test, test the shop peen in. Oh, it's, it's a job we wouldn't normally do, but if someone's in trouble, we're, we'll help out. We'll yeah. always have a go. I love that. I love that. And how do you find manufacturing in the industry changed over the years? Come through here. Well, it's certainly been a challenge the last couple of years, but yeah. I mean, we, we're still here. We must be doing something right. Um, we, we've got loyal customers. We've got a, a customer base, and um, the customers are loyal. They keep coming back to us. We get new business through word of mouth. Um, we don't actively go out looking for work. The work sort of finds us, if you like. Brilliant, right. Ho and hopefully when people watch this, they can come back and say, he's up for a challenge, Rob. Right, um, Sean, how are you? How are you? I'm fine. Yeah, um, now, you've been machining for how long? 35 years. 35 years, and do you enjoy it? Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> it's all right. Um, Sean, can you quickly tell me about this part here that you make? It's just a lid to a differential for a car. Yeah, okay, and what do you, can you open it up, have you got, um, here we go, we can see a little bit more detail for you Chloe. And that, that's the diff, it gets gears put into inside of it, I'll have some cross holes on, and they're the lid, once the machine the other side, they just slot on together, and that becomes the diff. These are like an aftermarket diff, so um, you know we, we we do any batches from five up to what we got here, a hundred off, you know. Brilliant. But that, that, this company will make a diff for any car, you know. Really? You want a diff making, they'll do it. Um, talking about stock as well, you've got quite a bit of stock here as well. We what, have, what, yeah. Thank you, Sean. By the way, it's got the music going on as well. We like it. <laughs> um, so you've got quite a bit of stock at the top here, haven't you? So what? Why? Um, why is that? We always we always overproduce. I mean, we, like I say, a lot of our works repeat work, so by overproducing, having stuff on the shelf. Next time it comes, it buys us a bit more time, you know, if we've got 20 or 30 parts on the shelf, yeah. it, you know, it keeps the customer happy and buys us a bit more time, you know. We're finding that lead times are becoming less and less. So I was by just about stocking, to ask you that. You know, by stocking a bit, it buys you a bit of extra time. Is that demand from industry? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. How do you think industry's changed then? It's certainly changed the last couple of years. Um, yeah. Uh, traditionally, we, you know, we'd get 
some quite high volumes. So it, it's all it's all turned to like just in time now. So you know, rather buy customers buying a year's worth of stock or two years worth of stock, they'll buy the same product four times a year, five times a year. So the volumes have got less. The volumes have got less. Yeah. So it's almost like working as you're going along, yeah. just in time. So that's why we, we, we start. It just buys us that extra time. You know, they're trying, yeah, it's not just in time, but it's a, you know it. It's almost just in time, you know. It's it, it, it buys us extra time. time. That's what we need, you know. Yeah. We, we we do a lot of varied and diverse work. I mean, look at some of these parts here. Um, what's your favourite machines? Not so much brands. Sorry, you go. What's your favourite? What's your favourite machines? Um, not so much brand wise, but what do you like about machines? Have they changed over the years? Well, they have. I mean, 20 years ago we were cranking handles, you know. Now it's all pressing buttons. Oh, a bit more to it, I suppose. But yeah, but it's great. Isn't it? It's great. You see dirty grep billets, and a few days later they're nice shiny parts. You know, it's, it's good fun. And what about like linear machines, box guideways? What are well, your thoughts on these? I mean, these? you know, it's, it's great when you you've got the, the five axis running. It's, it's it's brilliant. You see that things like that go, and it, it, it's just wonderful to see. You know. If you'd have asked me 20 years ago, would we be uh, doing five axis work? I'd have shook my head, you know, I and mean, here we are, we've got two five axis machines, you know. We've just bought the Citizen, seven axis, you know. We're, we're, oh, I like to think we're progressive and we, we're, 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 you know, we're, we're, if we think we can keep the machines busy, we'll buy the machines. Right, okay then. Now, oh, here he is, Eric, going away, working away. Um, I mean, look at him. Well, yeah, we, we still do a bit of manual work, a bit of grinding, a um, bit, bit of milling. I mean, yeah, this is the naughty boys' corner. This is where we send them when we haven't got any uh, real work from them. <laughs> that is it. I mean, you know, these, these machines are still being used. There's some parts we, we have to do on these machines. So, yeah. you know, you have to have a little bit of manual capacity. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, I know you're going to have a little look over there, but once we've seen that, let's head over into the turning section. Robbie, it's good to see your older Morries and your newer Morries too. Well, absolutely. They're, they're, they all do a job. That's one of the first machines we bought. Um, from the 80s that is but it still does the job uh, they're a good solid machine they're a they're a boxway machine I yeah certainly on the turning I prefer boxways to linear ways I think linear ways are a bit weak you can take big heavy cuts and and shift metal which is what we what we like doing right okay well let's keep going around as well because I think uh, your son is in here um quick question then automation from the subcontract machine shop owner are you using it? Are you well, venturing into it? Obviously on the lathes, it's, it's, it's quite easy to automate a lathe. You know, you stick a bar feed on the back um, and you can, you, can, you can automate bar. But uh, yeah, it's, a, it's a lot more expensive and you know, as you can see space is uh, an issue with us. To yeah. automate a, a milling machine, you know, you, you're talking a lot of money and you're talking a lot of space and uh, uh, space is, is money. Um, so, you know, these machines got bar feeders on and, um, that, you know, we, we load them up with bar and they run the cells. Rob, be honest with me, what are some of the hurdles, come in a little bit, um, what are some of the hurdles that you face running a machine shop nowadays then? Well, get, getting work and getting regular work. We, we're lucky we've got, um, we've got uh, good, loyal customers um, and good loyal customers who recommend us to other people as well. So, you know, we've got a good customer base. We get regular repeat work, um, which is the bread and butter. And, like I say, we'll have a go at anything. If we can get it on the machine and we think we can do it, we'll have a go. It's you know good what? to challenge yourself. Since we've been filming, this gentleman's phone has not stopped going. So I'm going to let you answer that. I'll steal this off you. You can answer that. And I want to come back to you if, if I can. Uh, Louis, um, Louis, you enjoying using this machine? This is the latest machine I'm that really, you've got. I'm really enjoying it, yeah. Really enjoying it. So you've come from a different background, as we said earlier. So how are you transitioning into becoming a machinist, but also... I'm assuming that you're, do you help out your dad with some of the new inquiries that come through as well? Yeah, definitely. I mean, getting onto this, I'd say it's the first machine I'm able to program and that software's brilliant, everything like that. It's a really good machine to start out with. And having a fresh background for sliding, I don't have any preconceptions of a machine in, so I've been really enjoying it. And then being the next generation, I'm helping with like the more digital side, sort of starting to try and streamline stuff, more digital, like just simple stuff like making all the... Uh, drawings digital and so far it sounds, yeah. sounds easy, but it helps a lot well no absolutely yeah. and that'll help your dad out as well exactly yeah. so what do you enjoy about doing this day to day then is it a challenge what it's like every day is different it's always a new job coming in it's not like we're running the same job every day in and day in day out saying it's not just just programming you get to be hands-on changing machines over setting, setting tools checking parts and stuff like that it's interesting to see what comes through you know we often hear about labor shortages as well in industry you know what would you do you, do you know anything about this you, you know are you finding that your dad's 
needs new people or do you think automation for you is the future? I think automation is the future, but obviously you still need the guys, the people to program them. Yeah. So you're always going to need bodies on the floor to be doing these things. But I mean, I've got loads of friends that are in, in, just, in uh, engineering, so I don't think there's a massive shortage of it, but it's just finding the right person for the right job, I think. Right, perfect. And last but not least, I'm going to steal this away yep. from you. Thank you so much. No worries. Thank you. Yep. And last but not no means least, Genuinely, his phone has not stopped. We've had to stop filming twice already. Uh, Rob, future of this company. Where's it going? What's your plans? Hopefully, it's going to him. <laughs> no, it's not. It's He's got a great got... big smile on his face there. <laughs> We've got a third generation now. I mean, it's really nice. I'd like to think it will. I mean, it's a good industry to get into. I think it's undervalued, but, uh, you know, it ain't for me to make the decisions. We do what's in front of us. Hopefully, we make a living. And, uh, you know, we've invested heavily. And uh, if I'm honest, I don't think... The money is in this industry that should be in it. It's, it's undervalued. But. And what, what do you think we could do to change that? Because we kind of, we love talking about this with, you know, some of the machine tool manufacturers, but it, we don't always get this conversation with people well, like you know, yourself. I mean, buy British. Source locally. Keep, keep work in this country, you know. Some I don't talent, know. isn't there? Yeah. yeah, well, absolutely. It's yeah, I mean, it's nice to see. A lot of work is coming back, especially, you know, sort of post-pandemic. Um, I think a lot of work has come back, but... Um, it's nice to see. It's, it's nice to see. It's nice to see businesses busy and, um, and, and work going out the door. You're enjoying it, aren't you? Oh, I love it. Living the dream. <laughs> Living the dream. But you'd still <laughs> like to be in Barbados, though, wouldn't you? Of course. Yeah. Yeah, of course. More automation, than, <laughs> as you said to me earlier. You said, I would have about 10 of these if I could, and then I'd be in Barbados. Well, that's what it's all about, isn't it? I mean, if you, if you keep these machines busy, they'll make you money. Or well, hopefully. <laughs> and what you're saying, what do you like to say? If it's not, come on. <laughs> if, the, if the spindle's not turning, it's not earning. Perfect. Which is not good, because I think like, three spindles have been stopped when you've been round here. So. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry, we'll go now. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rob. Cheers.